Welcome back with a smiling face. Important note before starting, if you are a fan of audio stories then our Patreon account is the best platform for you, join us on Patreon for the best audiobooks ever. Redeeming Himself Episode 2 Chapter 9-15 to Azalea I woke up the next morning wrapped in a quilt in my bed. I don't remember Liam leaving last night. I also can't remember the last time I slept so well. This was better than the past few days. The ache in my chest was so light that I could completely ignore it. I got up from my bed and walked over to my small kitchenette to get a glass of water. I went to my fridge to see if there was some fruit I could snack on while getting ready. I would definitely be eating breakfast at the inn this morning. There was a note on my fridge. I couldn't stay all night. I didn't think it was safe. I will come back tomorrow with the pack doctor. I will fill him in on what happened three years ago. He may have more questions for you. No one will know besides us. We should arrive around noon. Please call me if you need anything, or we need to arrange a different time. Here is my personal cell phone number, so you do not have to call the pack house. Liam I could make that work. I'm sure I had plenty of things to catch up on at the inn, but this was important. I would just get over there and start as soon as possible. I don't mind working late after meeting with the doctor either. A good night's sleep also renews my energy. I don't know why I slept so well with him. Maybe it was his warmth or the slight forest smell that clung to him. I went to my dresser, grabbing some leggings and a loose-fitting shirt along with some new underwear. I went to my bathroom, showering and dressing quickly. I pulled my hair up in a messy bun. I generally do not wear makeup as I never learned how to put it on. I made my way up to the inn and walked in the kitchen door. It was still early enough that Amy wasn't here to start breakfast. I went out to the front desk to figure out what needed to get done today. I set to work cleaning rooms for check-in today, breakfast utterly forgotten with a to-do list now in my hands. Last year for Christmas, Amy got me this neat little thing called an MP3 player that she put music on. I like to bring it with me when I do chores like these, it makes the time go by much faster. After finishing the rooms, I started downstairs. The dining room was full of breakfast stragglers, so I started in the sitting rooms. The inn had two. I moved around the rooms, dusting shelves and knick-knacks, wiping tables and chairs, cleaning windows and vacuuming the rugs. I was not paying attention to the time. I was dusting shelves facing away from the front door when he came in. Of course, I had no idea until, out of nowhere, I felt a hand on my waist and someone's face next to my ear. I froze as he pulled one of the earbuds from my ear. Now don't you look tempting, kitten, his voice said in my ear. Kitten? What? I turned slowly to find myself basically in Liam's chest. When the realization came over me, I jumped back. I moved just far enough to smack right into the bookshelf. Ow! I groaned, grabbing the back of my head. The look on Liam's face went from one of CKY amusement to panic immediately. Azalea, I am so sorry. Oh, goddess, are you okay? Are you bleeding? He asked worriedly. Ow, um, no no. I think I'm okay. Just a bit tender now, I said. Why don't we go to the kitchen and put some ice on that just in case, young lady, an older gentleman said behind Liam. Oh, sure, I said, not noticing the man before. Before I could move, Liam grabbed my hand dragging me back to the kitchen. Luckily, it seems Amy had left to do the shopping for dinner and wasn't in the kitchen. I did not want to explain this to her yet. When we got there, Liam turned around, 
grabbed me by my waist, and set me on the prep table. He turned to find the freezer. Right in the door, he found the three ice packs we kept on hand. He grabbed one, bringing it over to me. He stood in front of me, splitting my legs to either side of his hips as I sat on the table. He gently pressed the ice pack to the back of my head as his eyes bore into mine. I am really sorry for scaring you, Azalea. I should have just waited to get your attention, he said. I'm okay. I promise. This probably isn't even necessary. I replied. I reached up to take the ice pack from his hand. No. Just let me, he said with sincerity in his eyes. Why was he trying so hard to take care of me? I have been taking care of myself since I was five years old. All right, big bad alpha. Let me look at her, came the older man's voice from behind us. Liam growled lowly at him. And hush your growls. You know I will not take any of that. I can go back to my clinic at any time. Remember, this is a favor. Yes, sorry, uncle. Liam said. My eyes grew with realization as the man moved in front of me, and Liam stepped away. Hi, Miss Simmons, as you have probably guessed, I am Dr. Ronald Blackfer, the brother of our former Alpha Robert and this nitwit's uncle. I am pleased to meet you, the doctor said. I looked at Liam. It's okay, Azalea. Just because he is my uncle does not mean he will tell anyone. No one in the pack knows we are here, Liam said, trying to reassure me. I don't know why but I never thought about him bringing his uncle here. I nodded my head and looked back to Dr. Blackfur. How about you just call me Ron, okay? Now before we get to the pressing matters at hand, let me see that head. I understand that you never got a wolf, so you heal as a human would, he asked as he began to feel the back of my head. I winced slightly as he touched the most tender spot. Well, sort of, I said. My wolf came at thirteen just like everyone else's, I guess. Although, we never shifted. But about two months later, she stopped talking to me, I told him with a shrug. He had finished feeling my head and handed the ice pack back to me. Better hold that there a bit longer, he said. That is very unusual for a wolf. On the first full moon after your thirteenth birthday, how did you feel? Did you feel any shifting in your body, pain in your extremities, anything of this sort? As he talked, Liam came up to my side. He grabbed the ice pack from me and held it to my head. Uh, no, I don't think so. I can't remember, honestly. I told him. I don't even remember my wolf's name. Hmm. Your wolf spoke to you, right? Yeah, she did. Did she ever take control of your body? How would I know that? He turned and looked at Liam a conversation passing between them that I was not privy to. Liam turned to me with a tight smile. Azalea, when I touch you, what do you feel? Liam asked me. Warmth, I guess. It feels really nice because I get cold a lot. Why? And when Liam rejected you three years ago, what did you feel then? Dr. Ronald asked. I sighed not exactly wanting to revisit that night. But, this was important, or he wouldn't be asking. Well, I didn't know what was happening. I was already feeling a little sick from the drive. I didn't get in cars often as a kid. I always walked to school. When he said he was rejecting me, it kind of felt like someone was squeezing my heart and trying to rip it from my chest. I couldn't breathe properly for a while either. It was worse than breaking my wrist or ribs, I said. I could feel Liam's gaze on me. I didn't want to look at him. 
I could not take his pity on top of needing his help. I see, Dr. Ronald said. And Liam said you weren't feeling well when he got here yesterday. Can you tell me about that? Well, I guess I was just feeling really under the weather. My chest felt very heavy, and my body sort of ached all over. I couldn't get comfortable sleeping either, so I hadn't slept much for a few days. I don't really know why, but my body just started to feel a little better when he hugged me. He is really warm, and it felt nice, I paused. The rest felt a little personal. Dr. Ronald looked from me to Liam. Please go on, Azalea. You seem much better today. I could feel myself blush. I looked down at my hands. Well, I asked Liam if we could just stay like that for a few more minutes. He, uh, he picked me up and laid me in my bed. When he laid down with me, it felt like my whole body was relaxing. He was warm, and my bed was really comfortable. I ended up falling asleep. When I woke up, I was feeling a lot better. Liam and Dr. Ronald looked to be having their own little conversation again. I was probably just drained and overworked. I haven't been taking much time off lately. I also haven't been sleeping well, so I am sure that just Liam being so warm just made me sleepy. My apartment can be a little cold sometimes, I said, looking between them. Dr. Ronald looked at me, Azalea, I do have more questions still but I need to ask you an important question about the night Liam rejected you. Did you accept his rejection? Yeah, I let him leave me here at the inn. I found his note and did as he asked. I didn't see a reason to go after him. I knew he hated me after all. I knew he needed to do it so he could be happy. He couldn't ever be happy with someone like me. Plus, I don't think Alpha Robert would have ever allowed it. But specifically, did you say that you accepted his rejection? I didn't say anything to him that night. Liam did all the talking. Why? Azalea, Liam and I need to discuss something. Would you mind if we stepped into the dining room, maybe? Uh sure, but uh, I looked down at the floor. Our prep tables were a little tall compared to me. Liam took the hint coming around the table. He helped me down. Can I get you anything, Liam, Dr. Ronald? I could make some coffee, and there should be some pastries around here somewhere. That would be lovely, thank you, Dr. Ronald replied. He and Liam turned to leave. I watched as they pushed their way out the kitchen doors. Liam looked back at me over his shoulder for just a second. Liam. I can't decide if this is fantastic or the worst. Listening to her explain things to my uncle was like a repeated kick in the gut. So, your mate bond was actually never severed. Although, I am not sure any mates have ever left a bond damaged for such a length of time. But that's where things get more difficult. I cannot be sure but based on observations of her growing up and some of the things she has told me today, her wolf is suppressed. It is not common for a wolf to have never shifted, I would hazard to say she may be the only one, my uncle explained. But is she feeling the bond? I don't feel warmth when I touch her. I feel sparks, the most pleasurable sparks you can imagine. It's just the most amazing thing I have ever felt whoa whoa whoa. I know how mate bonds feel there, boy. But I don't know if she feels the mate bond. My theory yes, but not to the same degree you do. Although I haven't seen it personally, I have read similar descriptions of the mate bond in humans. When she was younger, do you ever remember her with injuries? Do you recall anything about her healing? He asked. I thought back to my 17th birthday, to the cuts on her feet before that. To the many times she would fall or get pushed down. She got hurt a lot, I guess. 
I don't think she heals like a wolf. But if she heals and feels the mate bond like a human would, why did it hurt her as bad as me when I tried to reject her? Because her wolf didn't just leave her. At least, I don't believe it did. Her parents were both werewolves, so the likelihood of them giving birth to a child who was not is almost non-existent. Wolf halves leaving you is actually a myth. They can decide to hide or block us out, but they cannot leave. Our wolves are a part of us. But the fact that she never shifted concerns me. Right now, my theory is that her body could not handle the shift, so she never felt it happening. Her wolf retreated and lay dormant because it was never fully released. But what would keep her from shifting? I asked, not understanding. It was not something that a wolf had control of the first time. On your thirteenth birthday, your wolf came to you. On the first full moon following that, you would shift under the moonlight. My thirteenth birthday happened to be on a full moon, so Gavin and I did not have much time to get acquainted. My best guess, and that is all I can do for the moment, was her body. She was clearly malnourished most of her adolescence. Her size is almost unheard of for a werewolf. Have you ever met another wolf that is less than five and a half foot in height? His words cut a little deep. All those years she lived in the same house as me. Every day there was always enough food for everyone. No one was hungry. We could even come to the kitchens and raid the fridge and pantry for leftovers. I had never seen her eating with us ever. Mom had told me once she was permitted to eat in the kitchens after meals were served. I just thought my parents didn't want a traitor eating with the other pack members. I sat down, burying my face in my hands. How was I so oblivious all those years? I was so self-centered. My uncle sat down next to me. Look Liam he began. He was interrupted by the doors to the kitchen swinging open. She walked towards us, carrying a tray with coffee and snacks. She set it down on the table by us. Don't let me intrude. I can leave you guys alone, she said. No, no. I think I will take my leave. Azalea, it was lovely to meet you formally. We will see each other again soon. Liam, I will see you this evening, my uncle said. He stood up and left us there. I turned and looked at Azalea. She sat there with her hands in her lap. I really wanted to hold her hand. So, uh, does Dr. Ronald know what to do about all this, she asked me. No, not really, I said, looking away from her. Oh, she said. She stood up. I thought she was about to walk away, and I panicked a little. She grabbed the coffee craft and began pouring us each a cup. She poured a copious amount of cream and sugar in hers. She handed me the other cup. I looked at the tray, noticing some croissants. I reached over, grabbing one. She sat there sipping her coffee, not really looking at me. Goddess, I was so relieved when she said she never said the words. She never actually accepted the rejection meaning that our mate bond was never broken. It did mean that the few times I had found she-wolves to let off a little steam within the past couple of years, she probably knew. I imagine it felt about as bad as the night I tried to reject her. Gwen refused to accept her mate's rejection. He immediately found other she-wolves to keep him company. Damien was ready to kill him. Gwen was screaming in agony every time he slept with another she-wolf. Lily was the one who finally convinced her to say the words and accept it. I should probably get back to work now, um, you know the way out, she said, breaking me from my thoughts. My heart sank. I hadn't thought about leaving her today. Actually, uh, I said, trying to find an excuse to stay with her. I was thinking, maybe, you might want to spend the day with me. Goddess, 
I am so lame. But I would do anything just to spend a little more time with her. Actually, lover boy, she has things to do. But if alpha duties can be ignored to spend time with girls all day, then I have a thing or two you can do, I heard the old man say as he walked up behind us. I turned to look at him. Before telling him I would have to decline, I heard a giggle coming from behind me. I stopped completely. It was the most amazing sound I have ever heard. I had never heard her laugh, ever. I will leave you two alone. I will be in the laundry room. Bye, she said, dashing out of the room. I could not help but watch her a s sway as she ran away from me, making my pants tighten uncomfortably. Hey, you stop that now, alpha boy. Mr. Greyback barked at me. I looked at him raising my eyebrow. And what am I doing? Now you're cleaning my gutters, he said, throwing a pair of gloves at me. Ladder is in the shed. I rolled my eyes as he walked away. I guess maybe I could use this as an excuse to have dinner with her later. Chapter 10 Azalea o k who is Mr. Tall hot and gorgeous that grumpy gray back has cleaning the gutters. I saw him leaving your apartment last night while I was finishing prep, Amy asked as she bustled around the kitchen making dinner. Oh, please don't start Ames. I said. That is not a can of worms I want to open right now. Well, I am not gonna let you off for much longer. You need to dish. If you are doing the tango with that hunk of man, you have to give me details, she said, wiggling her eyebrows at me. What are you even talking about? Why would we go dancing? Oh, girl. I always forget just how naive you are. Maybe I should keep tall, hot, and gorgeous away from you. He looks like he would corrupt you. And although I am sure you would love his brand of corruption, I don't think you're ready for all that tall, hot, and gorgeous. Liam, okay. His name is Liam. We kinda grew up together, I told her. How do you grow up with that and end up sad and alone? I am not sad and alone. I am just alone and me. Plus, I have you and ABI, I argue with her. She just laughed at me. I give up. going back to the receipts I was recording. I was not ready to talk about Liam with Amy yet. I didn't even know what was going to happen. Dr. Ronald did not know what was wrong with this bond thing yet. I sat in the kitchen catching up on the bookkeeping while Amy made dinner. I put my headphones in so she wouldn't feel the urge to continue to badger me for more information about Liam. We weren't expecting a massive crowd for dinner this evening as the inn was only about 50% full right now, and lunch was by far more popular. Amy was cooking up some steak and chicken fajitas tonight, and I could not wait. I had made a cake already this afternoon, and it was ready to serve for dessert. For the second time today, my unsuspecting self felt someone leaning over my shoulder. My earbud was pulled out of my ear. and Liam said, Hello gorgeous, in a seductive tone. This time, he was ready. I jumped so hard that I fell back off my stool. His strong arms caught me, preventing me from falling on my butt. You did that on purpose. I said angrily. So? I really couldn't help it, he said, giving me an adorable smile. You were so focused. It was cute. I blushed, looking away from him. He laughed, setting me down. Uh, dinner will be done soon. Will you be staying? I asked him, trying to change the subject. Do you want me to stay, Azalea? We should at least repay you with some dinner for cleaning the gutters. I do appreciate the help. I can never reach them properly. I tell him. I'd do anything you asked me to, Azalea, he said, looking into my eyes. 
there was some emotion there that I could not quite read. Well, thank you, I replied nervously. I really do hate ladders. So um, why don't you wash up? It looks like Amy is ready to serve dinner. I'll help her. He nodded but didn't move. After a moment, I said, I guess we could sit together in the dining room if you'd like. He gave me an enormous smile, nodding his head again. This time he turned around and went to the sink to wash up. I sighed, moving over to the counter to grab a tray of food to take out to the dining room. That doesn't look like nothing, Amy said as I joined her in the dining room. I set the tray down on the buffet table. And what does it look like? I said, crossing my arms. It looks like my little Lee has a crush on Tall, Hot and Gorgeous. It looks like Tall, Hot and Gorgeous has eyes for my little Lee, she teased. Oh, if only she knew what this actually was. I don't crush anyone. I said, irked with her pestering. It's have a crush or crushing on for starters, she said, shaking her head. Man, how did you ever live this long? Also, you totally do. I can tell just by the way you look at him or try not to look at him. Okay, I have no idea what you're talking about now. Lee, you like him. You want to spend time with him. You want him to notice you. And girl, he's noticing, she said with a knowing look. Ames, he doesn't like me, and I promise you, I can't like him. Lee, I really think your innocence is sweet. But I am telling you, honey, that man is a walking inferno, and his eyes go straight to you whenever you are near him. Inferno? He is not on fire. What do you even mean? She sighed, shaking her head at me. Lee, when he gets close to you, how do you feel? Do you get warm? Maybe your cheeks flush a bit. I mean, he has an abnormal amount of body heat, so yes, I get warm when he stands close to me. What I couldn't say was that wolves were always warm. I still did not follow how this was evidence that he likes me. Girl, you might just be too hopeless. If only I weren't married, I'd jump on that faster than a moving train, Amy said, rolling her eyes at me. She turned to go back into the kitchen to get the rest of the food. I went over to the cabinets to pull out the dinner plates. I may not hate Liam, but I would not say that I like him. I still need his help, so I need to be around him. I had no plans on falling in love with him. As soon as we fixed all this messed up mate bond stuff, he was going to go back to the pack and leave me here. Just like three years ago, he'd walk away and not look back. For some reason, this thought made my heart ache a little. Liam. I listened as Azalea and her chef friend talked out in the dining room. Thank God as for wolf hearing. It looks like my little Lee has a crush on tall, hot and gorgeous. It looks like tall, hot and gorgeous has eyes for my little Lee, Amy said to Azalea. Tall, hot and gorgeous? I guess I haven't exactly hidden my attraction to Azalea. I didn't know anyone was paying enough attention to her to notice, though. I don't crush anyone. Azalea snapped back at her. It's have a crush or crushing on for starters. Man, how did you ever live this long? Also, you totally do. I can tell just by the way you look at him or try not to look at him, Azalea told her. My heart began to race a little. I couldn't read Azalea, I couldn't tell if I affected her or not. Okay. I have no idea what you're talking about now. Lee, you like him. You want to spend time with him. You want him to notice you. And girl, he's noticing, Amy told her. Could it be true? Do I actually have a chance to fix things with my mate? Would she accept me? 
My uncle seemed very worried about her wolf. I don't care if she has a wolf or not, I just want a chance to have her by my side. Ames, he doesn't like me, and I promise you, I can't like him. Oh, how wrong you are, kitten. Lee, I really think your innocence is sweet. But I am telling you, honey, that man is a walking inferno, and his eyes go straight to you whenever you are near him, Amy tells her. She isn't wrong. When I am near her, there is nothing else that I can focus on. I could spend every minute watching that beautiful creature and still not have enough time. Goddess, how do mates actually function in everyday life? Inferno? He is not on fire. What do you even mean? Azalea replied, her voice getting a little squeakier. I could hear Amy sigh, almost defeated with Azalea. Lee, when he gets close to you, how do you feel? Do you get warm, maybe your cheeks flush a bit? My heart began to race. I leaned closer to the door to make sure I didn't miss anything. I mean, he has an abnormal amount of body heat, so yes, I get warm when he stands close to me. My excitement dropped a little. I am a wolf, and we are warm. But was she just saying this because Amy is a human? What if Azalea really couldn't feel the bond? Could I make her fall in love with me like humans do? Would she just resist me even if I tried? I could try everything in my power, but if she couldn't be persuaded to give me a chance, it would be hopeless. I was broken from my thoughts as the kitchen door swung open. Amy came in, stopping as she saw me. Uh, hi. I don't think we've met yet. I am Liam. I am Azalea's, uh, friend, I said nervously. I know who you are, Amy said with an odd look on her face. Oh well. It's nice to meet you, I said, now feeling a little awkward. I am just gonna go find Azalea. Wait, she said forcefully. Look, Lee is, well, she is naive. She is good. She doesn't have much, and I don't really think she grew up the best, even if she really won't tell any of us. Despite all that, she has a big heart and doesn't need someone coming in here messing with that, she paused, looking me up and down. She has never talked about her childhood. Never once mentioned any friends or family. But here you are. Someone she grew up with. Just what do you want from her, she asked in a harsh tone. I eyed her for a moment. So, the gossipy cook was a little more intuitive than I took her for. I sighed. I have no ill intent towards Azalea. I just want her to be happy. She asked for my help with something, and that's all I want to do. I would be lying if I said I didn't like her and I wouldn't insult your intelligence like that. But if Azalea doesn't want me around, then she'll have to tell me that herself. Until then, I will be whatever she wants and needs me to be for her, I tell her. She eyes me up and down for a moment. I am not a cliché type of person, but you hurt her, and you will regret it. She turned and went to the counter, picking up trays of beef and chicken. She turned back around, walking towards the dining room again. She paused, looking at me once more. Look, she's so naive it hurts. She's got no idea that she has feelings for you and probably can't even begin to sort out those feelings. Just take it slow with her. Let her be in control. I get the feeling she never had choices before she showed up here. The old man says she was basically dropped at his doorstep with almost nothing. Whoever left her didn't even let her finish high school. She left after that, going out to the dining room. I never thought about the fact that I convinced my parents to get rid of her before graduation. I was so focused on getting her out of the pack I forgot all about graduation. 
she probably never got the chance to graduate. Plus, she was barely going to be 17 at the time. Finding a job must have been nearly impossible. The old man probably just took pity on her, I am such a DK. I walk out of the kitchen doors to the dining room. I scan the room and find her, she is greeting guests at their tables. I can't help but watch her. Her smile is absolutely radiant. I want to make her smile. She looked up, catching sight of me. She smiled, walking towards me. Hi. We have a table over in the back. We can grab a plate and go sit if you like, she said. Sounds delightful as long as I am with you, I smiled at her. She blushed slightly. She turned around and walked towards the buffet table, I followed behind her. We made our plates, and she led us over to a table towards the back of the dining room. We seemed to be away from the other inn guests. We sat down and began eating in awkward silence. Gavin decided now was the best time to badger me. Talk to her. Tell her what your uncle said. Tell her she's still our mate he demanded. No, I can't. She could reject us or just run away. I need to play this slow, I shot back at him. You are the dumbest wolf I have ever met. Just claim her. Maybe if we actually mate, her wolf will come out. He had an interesting idea, but I would never force her to mate with me simply to test his theory, no matter how much my body yearned for her. Hey, you're the wolf here. And I will not force her to mate with us. The more time we spend with her and don't mark her or our mate with her, the more likely you will be to lose control. I can't promise our instinct won't win out eventually. I will never hurt her. I will never let it happen. I told him. I don't need to tell you how much of an A asterisk S I have been. She will never be hurt by me again. Okay, well, if you're not gonna talk to her, then let me have control, he said excitedly. So that's what you want? No can do. You are a horny wolf, and I do not trust you with her, I denied him. We're an alpha. Of course, we are horny. It is not just me. You are just wasting our mate time. He complained to me. You are not getting control. Now drop it. I replied angrily. I was so caught up in my argument with Gavin that I had not realized that Azalea was staring at me with curiosity on her face. Oh, sorry. Was talking with my wolf for a minute, I told her quietly. Her eyes grew a little wide. Don't worry, I would never let him out here. She nodded. I really wish I knew what was going on in her head. After a moment, she asked, Do you speak to him often? Yeah, all the time, I answered, a little confused. Oh. That must be nice. You must never get lonely with your wolf to talk to, she said while picking at her food. Sometimes. It's more like a yappy dog in my head that won't stop giving me his opinion, I said. Her face looked a little sad. Do you get lonely, Azalea? I asked. She didn't respond right away. She looked like she was thinking about something. Maybe a little, but it's okay. I just find something to do or a book to read. I am used to keeping to myself. I don't bother anyone this way, she said. Azalea. We sat down with our food. I chose a table in the back, so we were less likely to be overheard. I didn't want any wolf stuff to be brought up around all the humans. I also did not want the inquisitive ears of particular chefs to try to listen to our conversation. We began eating, and I had no idea what to say to him. I didn't expect him to stay after his uncle left. I looked over at him. He did not seem to notice me watching him. It looked as if he was having an argument in his head, 
and I wasn't sure who the winner was. After a few minutes, he seemed to notice me staring at him. Oh, sorry. Was talking with my wolf for a minute, he said. Oh, I interrupted him. It was probably something important too. I am sure he has all kinds of critical business he needs to attend to, but instead, I am taking up all his time and wasting it with stupid chores like cleaning the gutters. Don't worry, I would never let him out here, he said. Well, I sure hope he wouldn't shift in the middle of the inn's dining room. I just nodded at him, not really understanding. I wanted to know what having a wolf was like since I never really got the opportunity to have my wolf. I fought with myself but finally asked. Do you speak to him often? Yeah, all the time, he answered me with a confused look on his face. I guess he wasn't expecting me to ask about his wolf. Oh. That must be nice. You must never get lonely with your wolf to talk to. Amy said I was lonely. I pushed my food around my plate. I don't know about being lonely, I have always been alone. I had no friends at school or in the pack house. Everyone either ignored me like I didn't exist or picked on me for their own enjoyment. Sometimes it's more like a yappy dog in my head that won't stop giving me his opinion, he said. I mean, having someone in your head that was only yours would be kind of special. A built-in friend that couldn't leave. I guess it could be annoying sometimes, but I bet it was also comforting. I could never admit it to Amy, but sometimes I wished I had friends to spend time with. She was my friend, and there was always a B.I., but we were both so busy with the inn. We didn't have a big enough budget to get her a proper assistant, and I was taking more on because of the old man. But sometimes, I wondered if we were friends out of convenience more than anything. Do you get lonely, Azalea? he asked me. Why does he ask me this stuff? He's going to leave again soon, and I won't be his problem anymore. Thinking about him leaving me alone again actually made me sad. Maybe a little, but it's okay. I just find something to do or a book to read. I am used to keeping to myself. I don't bother anyone this way, I said, knowing full well I couldn't tell him the truth. I played with the food on my plate a little bit more before looking out for him. He had a somber look on his face, but I didn't know why. Azalea, I think we need to talk a bit more. There's some things that I think I should tell you even though my uncle asked me to wait, he said, looking around. But we should probably do this somewhere a little bit more private. I nod my head. Why don't we go back to my apartment? That will be great, he said. I got up, grabbing my plate to head to the kitchen to wash it. He followed me, giving me an odd look. That's all you're going to eat, he asked. Before I could respond, I heard, Howdy there, Miss Lee, coming from John, who was walking back from the serving table. Oh, hi John, I said. How are you today? A lot better now that I am talking to you, he said. What are you up to today? Oh, you know a little of this and that, I told him. I hear Liam clear his throat behind me. Oh right, well, I better get going. Please enjoy your dinner. Well, it doesn't look like you finished yours. Wouldn't you want to join me? He asked with a grin on his face. Liam had decided he had enough of whatever this exchange was. He wrapped his arm around my waist again and said, I'm sorry, but she has plans. We'll need to leave now if we're going to make it on time. I turned to him, looking a little confused. He gave me a look like I shouldn't argue with him. He began to pull me away, so I turned and waved to John. Liam grabbed my plate for me and left them sitting on an open table as we walked out of the dining room. What was getting into him right now? Chapter 11 
he continued to pull me until we were outside the front door. Where are we going? I asked him. He knew my apartment was in the back of the property. We have plans, he said with an angry tone to his voice. He led me to his car, opening the passenger side door. He looked at me expectantly. Liam, I don't understand what's going on. I thought we were going somewhere quiet to talk, I said. Talking can wait, we're going somewhere, he said as he picked me up and placed me in the passenger side seat of his car, buckling me in before he closed my door. He got in on the driver's side of the car and pulled out of the parking lot. After a few minutes of driving, I realized he was headed toward the edge of town, in the direction of the wolf side of the territory. My stomach immediately dropped, and I could feel the blood draining from my face. I'm not taking you back to the pack. Don't worry, he said, almost reading my mind. Can't you just tell me where we're going? He sighed. I know a place. And there won't be other wolves there, I promise. I just can't take the way that guy looks at you. The way John looks at me? I couldn't understand what he was thinking. John probably still thinks of me as some hopeless little girl who cannot get a lawnmower started. About one year ago. Oh goddess, this is the worst idea I've had so far. I convinced the old man that we could save money every month if I just cut the grass and took care of the flower beds instead of having a landscaper do it. I convinced him that we could bring the landscapers in every few months instead of every two weeks. But now, I sat here trying to get the mower started with very little luck. I have read the directions five times, and they still seemed like a foreign language to me. I sat down in the grass, frustrated with myself. Maybe I could get Amy to call her husband to come over and help me. Surely, he knew how to start a lawnmower. You look like you might need some help, miss, said a voice behind me. I turned to see a man no more than thirty standing behind me. He had a friendly face and a muscular build but definitely not the size of a werewolf. I was just contemplating that myself, actually, I said, getting up from the ground. I stuck out my hand, hi, I'm Azalea. I'm not sure I've ever seen you around here. Well, probably not, seeing as I just moved to town. Someone over at the store mentioned lunch at the inn is to die for. Well, I don't know about dying for it, but it is worth a try. I said with a smile. Well, in that case, I have a proposition for you, he said. How about you join me for some delicious lunch at this inn and then I'll help you do whatever it is you're trying to do with this lawnmower. What do you say? Sounds like a plan. Follow me, I'll get us the best table, I told him. I took him inside and set him by one of our windows with a view of the back patio. I told him I'd be right back and went into the kitchen. I washed up at the kitchen sink and told Amy to make sure to bring me out two specials to my table. I went back out and joined John at the table. So. Miss Azalea, what is a pretty young lady like you doing trying to push her lawnmower around? He asked me. Well, I work here. And I may have convinced the owner that we could save a little bit of money if I were to take care of the lawn sometimes. Well, that's awful nice of you. But it didn't look like you were getting very far. Yeah, that's the problem I ran into. I can't seem to get the mower started. Lucky for you, I'm pretty sure that's a problem I can fix for you. I also happen to have some time on my hands, so I wouldn't mind helping you mow that lawn. Oh no. I couldn't ask you to help me that much. If you could just show me how to start the mower, I would be very grateful. Absolutely, it would be my pleasure, he said. Right after our food was brought out, Mr. Greyback walked by the table. Aren't you supposed to be working, he asked me roughly. 
I'm taking a break for lunch. Don't you worry your pretty little head, the lawn will look great before the end of the day. I told him. And who's this? he asked. This is oh, I guess I never got your name. My name is John Henry. I just moved into town. No one moves here, said Mr. Grayback. John chuckled. Well, to be honest, my work brought me out this way, and I thought this little town was pretty charming. HHHMMPFFF, the old man replied and began walking away. I'm sorry, don't mind him. His wife died a few years ago, and ever since then, he's been pretty grumpy. So, I take it, that's your boss. Yep, that's him. He really is a sweet old man. He just has a bumpy exterior, I said with a giggle. We finished our lunch and went back outside. John very patiently showed me how to turn on the lawnmower and work it. He also showed me how to care for it properly. Without all his help, I don't think I would have ever finished. We drove along a little farther towards the wolf side of the territory. The longer we drove, the sicker I was feeling. I tried to look out the window, but it didn't help much. Liam soon turned off onto a dirt road. Um, H how much longer will we be driving? I asked quietly. Liam turned to look at me for the first time since we left the inn. I felt extremely nauseous. His eyes got white as he slammed on his brakes. In less than ten seconds, he was out of the driver's seat and opening my car door. The car was still running. As he grabbed me, I felt vomit working its way up my throat. Liam immediately had me out of the car and lying face down over his arm. I started throwing up the small amount of dinner I had eaten tonight. As I vomited, Liam held my hair and rubbed my back. It felt nice. Soon, I had nothing left to throw up. My eyes were watering a little bit. Liam continued to rub my back for a few more minutes before he helped me stand upright. As I stood up, I looked at Liam's face. He had a worried look on his face. He reached his hand up and wiped the tears out of my eyes. Are you okay? he asked. I feel better now, I said. I am really sorry. I forgot that you get motion sick. I shouldn't have made you come with me like that, he said. Oh, it's okay. How should you remember something like that? You probably haven't thought about that night since it happened, I laughed half-heartedly. The truth was I thought about that night more than I wanted to admit. He gave me a pained look. With a sigh, he asked, Do you want to just walk from here? We aren't far now. Um, sure, I said, not excited about the possibility of getting back in his car. Okay, one SEC, he said running back over to the car. He turned it off and grabbed his keys. He came back around, shutting both doors. Okay, it's this way, he said, pointing towards the dirt path we had been driving on. I nodded my head and motioned for him to take the lead. He reached out his hand like he was offering to hold mine, I paused. I didn't want to get lost in the woods especially as we weren't too far from where wolves would typically be. I also didn't want to give him the idea that I needed him. Once we could fix this weird mate bond situation, he would go back to his life and be with whoever he wanted while I went back to my life alone. I guess there was no harm in holding his hand this time. I hesitantly placed my hand in his, gaining a huge smile in return. We set off down the dirt road. Liam was so tall and walked so fast that I was practically running to keep up with him. After a few minutes, he realized this and slowed down. Sorry, he said. I am kind of used to people going at my pace. Soon enough, we came to a large clearing with a small pond on the far side. There was a waterfall that fed the pond. 
large trees and beautiful flowers surrounded the entire clearing. It was like a scene out of a movie. Wow, I said as I dropped Liam's hand and walked towards the pond. Do you like it? He asked nervously. I turned to look at him, shaking my head yes. He gave me a wide grin back. I walked over to the edge of the pond and sat down, listening to the water flow down the waterfall. Liam sat down next to me. Sometimes, I just need a break, I come here. It's quiet and calming, he told me. It's amazing. I wish I had a place like this, I said, still watching the waterfall. We can come here whenever you like, Azalea, he said, looking at me. I turned my head, meeting his gaze. Liam, what did you want to talk about? I asked, trying to change the subject. His being nice to me was too dangerous. Oh right, that, he said with a sigh. Where do I start? I guess the first thing is that our mate bond was never severed. He paused to gauge my reaction. My heart stopped for a second. How could that be? He rejected me. He broke the bond. He didn't want me. I know, I rejected you. But the thing is, you never accepted the rejection. You never said, I accept your rejection, so the bond wasn't fully broken, he said before I could respond. But I did what you asked. I didn't hate you, and I stayed in the human town. I said, panicking slightly. If the bond wasn't broken, then I am still his mate. What if he forced me to go to the pack with him? I couldn't survive it again. Please, Azalea, calm down, he said, grabbing my hand. I pulled it away quickly and stood up. I can't be your mate. I don't even have a wolf anymore. I have traitor blood, and everyone hates me. I would make an awful Luna. You have to do it again. I'll do it right this time, I said, full on panicking now. Azalea, please. I need you to be calm for a second and listen to me. Yes, I rejected you. I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. I'm not so sure anymore. My uncle isn't sure, but he thinks you may still have a wolf and that the mate bond may be able to bring her out, he said. He paused, looking at me. He took a step towards me while I stood rooted to the spot. Azalea, rejecting you was probably the worst thing I could have done. I truly thought the moon goddess made a mistake making you my mate. I see now that I should have protected you. I was young and stupid. Azalea, you aren't a traitor because of your parents. You didn't do anything. You were a child, an innocent child. I don't want to reject you again, he finished taking another step towards me. He was now inches from me. I looked down, not knowing what to say. He didn't want to reject me. I felt his finger under my chin, pushing my face up, so I was looking him in the eyes. Say something, anything, he pleaded. You don't want to reject me? I asked. No, I don't. Then what happens now? That I don't know he said with sadness in his voice. He reached out, cupping my face in his hand. He wiped away tears with his thumb that I didn't know were falling. Right now, seeing you cry is killing me. I'll do anything to stop it, he said. I laid my head on his chest. I didn't know what to do. He didn't want to reject me, but I could never be his mate. I would never be good enough for an alpha. We stood like that for a moment before he wrapped his arms around my body. Being in his arms felt so good. It almost felt like it was where I was supposed to be. He was so warm, and the sun was setting now, making the temperature drop. Are you cold? he asked after a few minutes. I just nodded my head, 
not pulling it from his chest. He picked me up in his arms, holding me close to his chest. Let's head back. I'll just carry you, he said, moving back towards the path we took to get here. No, I can walk, I told him, trying to get out of his grip. If I put you down, you'll be cold again. Plus, I am going to guess you don't have wolf senses, and there aren't exactly lights out here, he said. I guess I couldn't exactly argue with him. I must have dozed off as we walked because the next thing, I knew he was buckling me into the passenger side of his car. It's okay, you can sleep, he said. He closed my door and went around the car to get the driver's seat. I let myself doze back off to sleep as he drove. I woke up again as he picked me up out of the car. Where are we? I asked. Back at the inn. I'll take you to your apartment. I nodded my head and let him scoop me up. He carried me around the building and down through the backyard to my apartment. Where is your key, Azalea? he asked, coaxing me to answer him. Flower pot, I mumbled. He adjusted his grip so that he held me in one arm and started feeling inside my flower pot to find my key. When he found it, he unlocked my door, and we stepped inside. He walked over to the bed, still holding me in his arms. He laid me down on the bed, covering me with my blankets. Look, there are some things I have been ignoring for a couple of days now, some things I must take care of. But I want to see you again. How about you call me tomorrow night, and we can talk, he asked. I nodded my head, looking up at him. He grinned wide. Great. I'll talk to you then. And he turned to leave. Something inside of me wanted to ask him to stay, wanted him to keep holding me. But I knew that was selfish. He had things to do, like he said. Just because we still had a mate bond didn't mean I was anything to him. After he left, I crawled out of bed and went to my closet. I pulled out his hoodie and put it on. Tonight, I would need a little extra warmth. Liam. I left her in her tiny cottage apartment and went back to my SUV. I knew I couldn't stay with her. I was a mess right now, and that's not what she needed. Everything she did and every thought of her turned me on. But then she would turn around and give me a look and I would get lost in her eyes. Every time she cried, I wanted to rip the bastard responsible to pieces, but then I would realize I was that bastard. At least she let me carry her and take her home. I was able to hold her in my arms for that little bit. I got back in my car and was flooded with her scent again. I had turned the heat on for her on our way back to the inn, and now the car was warm with the smell of the most beautiful, delicate flowers. As I drove back to the pack house, her scent was driving me crazy. Once I got back to my room, I knew I would need to take a long cold shower to deal with everything tomorrow. Chapter 12 I ran my hands to my hair as I looked down at the files on my desk. I could not make heads or tails of these reports right now. The Alpha of the neighboring pack would be here soon to discuss our mutual hunter problem. Gavin had been an utter DK all day long since I left Azalea in her apartment alone. Apparently, he thought being with her was more important than the pack's safety at the moment. Part of me wanted to admit that I felt the same way, but I had responsibilities as Alpha that I couldn't overlook. There was a knock at the door. Come in, I growled. Gwen opened the door and strutted in. Not now, Gwen. Alpha Langston will be he momentarily, and we have important business, I told her. Oh, Liam baby, you don't have time for me, she said, coming around my desk. I turned my chair towards her. Not right now, Gwen, I don't. You'll have to find someone else to entertain you tonight. But Liam, 
I thought you were going to be my second chance. You know I am a fun ride, she said, running her hands up and down my chest. I didn't like the feeling. No, Gwen, I'm not, I said. Just give me a minute, Liam baby. I bet you could use a little stress reliever. She leaned over, kissing me, pushing with her tongue to gain entry to my mouth. I pushed her back. She stumbled, falling back to her a asterisk s. Gwen, I said no. Now get out. I shouted. At that moment, my office door swung open, and Damien and Alpha Langston stood in the doorway. I turned to look at them, then looked back at Gwen. She stood up and stomped out of my office. Again, man? She isn't gonna quit, is she? Damien linked me. No. Think your dad or Lily could talk to her. I can try, but no promises. Ahem. I believe we have a meeting, Alpha Langston interrupted. Unless you treat these hunters as a joke? I certainly don't treat the fact that three of my pack members were hunted down just two days ago. No, no, no. Sorry, Alpha. Just some personal business that won't resolve. Please have a seat, I told him. We spent four hours discussing and arguing about ways to handle our current hunter situation. At one point, Damien had to leave the meeting to manage other pack business. We got nowhere and resolved to meet again in a few days. I sighed as I closed the door behind Alpha Langston. If we weren't careful, my pack members would start to drop like flies. I sat back down at my desk and looked at my clock. It was already 7.30. Why hadn't Azalea called by now? I checked the messages on my office phone, and there was nothing from the inn. I also checked my cell phone and found I didn't even have a text message. I went to dial her number, realizing that I didn't have it. I had given her my cell phone number, and she called the pack house the other day. I decided to wait a little longer before I began to worry. I busied myself with patrol reports. When I had finished everything, I looked up, and it was 9.30 p.m. My heart began to race a little bit. Did she forget about me? Did she not want to be around me now that she knew the truth about the mate bond? Was she okay? I went back and forth with myself before finally giving in and calling the inn. Hello, Blue Moon Inn. How can I help you? I heard her voice over the phone. I sighed with relief. At least she was okay. Hi, Azalea, I said. She paused. Hi, Liam. I was a little worried because you never called. I told her. Oh, Liam, I'm sorry. We had a pipe burst this morning and a whole mess of last-minute bookings. I have been a little crazy today. That's okay. I just needed to make sure you're okay, I said. You aren't mad at me, she asked. No, Azalea, I couldn't be mad at you for working, I told her. You just had me a little worried is all. I paused, waiting for her to say something. She was making me nervous. So, did your uncle find anything out, she asked hesitantly. My heart sank a little. She wanted answers so she could be done with me. But I wasn't ready to give up on her. No, nothing yet. He said he would need a few days to do some research, I told her. Oh, okay, she said. In the meantime, maybe we could spend some time together? Maybe if we got to know each other a little better, it might encourage your wolf to come out. Sure, she said enthusiastically. That sounds nice. Just one thing. Anything, I replied. No driving please, she said. This made me laugh. Okay, deal. I think I can live with that, 
I said, still laughing. I really don't see how that was funny, she said stubbornly. It's not funny, it's just cute. So um, what about tomorrow? I think I could take off after lunch, she said. Great. Why don't I come to pick you up at three? I said with a smile. You know where I'll be, she said happily. Good night, Azalea. See you tomorrow. Good night, Liam, she said. We hung up the phone, and I couldn't think of anything to better lift my mood. We were going on a date. I was going to have a chance to make her fall for me. And the cherry on top of it all, she sounded excited by it. Soon I was going to have to tell Damien why I kept ditching pack duties, but I wanted to keep this to myself for now. Azalea After Liam had left me in my apartment, something in me relaxed. I knew he wasn't going to hurt me. He wasn't forcing me to go back to the pack. He was just trying to spend time with me on my terms. For now, I would try to enjoy this even if it couldn't last forever. I could pretend I was getting my happily ever after for a little while, right? It felt like there were butterflies in my stomach. Liam would be here in about two hours to pick me up. I don't know why I was so nervous. Part of me was so happy to be spending time. At the same time, another part of me was wondering what would happen when he was done with me. It seemed, for now, the happy part was winning. I traipsed into the kitchen to get some tea before I headed back to my apartment to get ready. Amy was making sandwiches as guests arrived in the dining room for lunch. Well, don't you look chipper? Didn't see you for breakfast, she said, eyeing me. I snuck in early and grabbed a muffin. I wanted to get started early today. I have something to do this afternoon, I told her. Would that something to do be a certain tall, hot, and gorgeous, she said suggestively. He has a name, Ames. And if you must know, yes, I will be doing something with Liam this afternoon, I said with a smile. Does my little Azalea have a crush, she said, teasing me. That I will not justify with an answer. I said, grabbing my cup of tea. Now. I will be in the back getting ready. Try not to need me. I said in a sing-song voice as I left out the back door. I went back to my apartment and sipped my tea for a moment before going to my closet. It was nice out right now, but it could get cool tonight, so I should bring a sweater in case we are out for a while. After much debate with myself, I picked out a floral pattern tea-style dress that fell to my knees. It accentuated my curves nicely while still being modest. Best yet, I had a dark green cardigan to match that looked awesome against my ginger hair. I hopped in the shower to wash all the morning's work off me before getting dressed. I got out of the shower, putting on a bra and panties before going back into the bathroom to dry and fix my hair. My hair was naturally wavy, so I dried it to leave some waves in it. I pulled it back into a half ponytail and found a ribbon to match my cardigan. I tied a bow around the pony, I hoped he would like it. I went to my closet to grab my dress and get ready. After getting dressed, I grabbed the small clutch purse that I almost never used, placing my wallet and keys inside. I went back to the bathroom to put some lip gloss on. I went to the closet and found some flats. I didn't own any heels and wouldn't want to wear them anyway. There was a knock at the door. I looked at my clock, seeing that it was only 2.30 p.m. Liam was early. Coming. I said, grabbing my cardigan and clutch. I paused at the door as it occurred to me that I could be overdressed. Another knock came at the door. Sorry, I, I started as I laid eyes on John. Oh, hi. What are you doing here? Well, I was hoping to catch you today before I left town for work again. 
shouldn't be gone long again. But Miss Amy said you were busy back here, so I thought I'd just drop by. That's so thoughtful. But really, you don't have to tell me every time you leave town. Well, Miss Lee, that just hurts me. Here I thought I was your best customer, he said in mock indignation. As I thought about it, I realized that he was at the inn pretty much every day for lunch and dinner. Oh no. I didn't mean it like that. I just wouldn't want to bother you, John. I said quickly. You aren't a bother, Miss Lee. Quite the opposite, actually he was cut off by a growl. I looked behind him to see Liam standing there with anger across his face. Liam I started. I'm sorry, but Azalea is busy right now. You'll have to talk to her some other time, he said in a dangerously low voice to John. My bad. Didn't know you were late for anything now. I guess I will take my leave. I'll see you in a couple of days, Miss Lee, John said, nodding at me with a smile. He turned around and seemed to look Liam up and down before walking back toward the inn. What was he doing here? Liam asked when he was out of earshot. I I don't know. I was getting R ready, and he knocked. I thought it was why you, I said with a hint of panic in my voice. We hadn't even left, and I was making him angry without trying. Maybe I shouldn't be letting my guard down so easily. He blanched slightly and shook his head. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I shouldn't take it out on you, he said. Here, I brought you these, he said as he handed me a beautiful bouquet of pink and white azaleas I hadn't noticed him holding. Oh, my goddess, thank you. I said, taking the flowers. Come in, I should put these in water. He followed me inside and stood in the doorway as I went to my small kitchen to find something for the flowers. I didn't have a vase, but I had a tall cup that would work well enough. I filled it with cool water then went to the drawer to get some plant food I kept for my other plants. I sprinkled a little in the water before putting the flowers inside. They smelled heavenly. I set them on the windowsill before turning to Liam. Thank you. No one has ever gotten me flowers before. I love them, I told him. It's my pleasure, Azalea, he said with a huge smile. I couldn't help but drool a little bit in my head. He looks so good. He wore a nice pair of dark jeans that hugged his muscular legs. He had a simple black shirt on, but you could see all his muscles through it. His eyes were the clearest blue I had ever seen. He wore his medium-length hair in a pushed-back but messy style. He was definitely attractive, and I couldn't compare. Shall we, he said, offering his arm. I grabbed my cardigan and clutch again and took his arm. Hopefully, his anger over John was forgotten. This was already the best and the only date I had been on. Chapter 13 Liam it was everything in my power that I could do not to walk over there and take her now. She had no idea how much she was driving me crazy. She moved around her small kitchenette, putting the flowers I got her in a vase. She wore a floral print dress that hugged her body and flowed around her hips right to her knees. Her soft hair was pulled away from her face, tied back in a bow with a ribbon, and it fell in gentle waves down her back. She was absolutely delectable, and it was hard just looking at her. I was trying to get my errant body under control when she turned to me, saying, No one has ever gotten me flowers before. I love them. I guess it would make sense that she had never gotten flowers if she hadn't dated anyone these past three years. No one in the pack would have ever been that kind to her. It's my pleasure Azalea, I said smiling. Shall we? I offered her my elbow like a gentleman, and she gripped my arm with her small hand. Tonight, I would be on my best behavior and spoil her. 
If no one had ever gotten her flowers, I bet she has never been on a proper date. And luckily, I had a plan. We walked around the inn and down the front driveway. Luckily, the town was small, but I was going to have to fix that motion sickness problem eventually. We walked through town, her hand still holding me. She had a small smile on her face. So, where are we going? she asked sweetly. I hoped it wasn't just the mate bond making her feel at ease with me. She was not as hesitant as she was before I confessed everything in the clearing. I thought it might be nice to have a cup of coffee and get to know each other a little first, I said. That sounds nice, she said with a sweet smile. If I could spend the rest of my life making her smile, I don't think it would be enough. Let me talk to mate, Gavin butted in. No, she isn't ready for you. She's barely comfortable with me, I shot back. You're hogging mate. So. She's both our mate. You must share. She doesn't have a wolf for me to bond with. Not now. I said, blocking him out. After a few more minutes of walking, we reached the cafe in the middle of town. I led her to one of the tables on the patio. I pulled her chair out for her, letting her sit down before I scooted it back in. Thank you, she said with a blush. I sat down across from her. A waitress came over to take our order. She immediately began batting her eyelashes at me, but I kept my eyes on Azalea. Hello. What can I get you today, the waitress said almost ignoring Azalea. Coffee. Black for me. Azalea, baby, what would you like? Coffee, two creams, and two sugars, please, she said, looking at the waitress. And two slices of chocolate cake, I said, eyes still fixed on Azalea. Coming right up, darling, she said, smiling at me and walking away. I didn't fail to notice the seductive sway of her hips out of my peripheral vision. Sorry, sweetheart, maybe two years ago when I was lonely, frustrated, and desperate. Not now that I have a chance with my mate. So, I think she might like you, Azalea said. Who? I said, trying to act oblivious. The waitress. She's really pretty she said. She was. You don't have to act like you didn't notice, she said, a little sad. Azalea, when I am with you, I don't notice anyone but you. Azalea so, I think she might like you, I said, starting to think maybe this was not a good idea. Who, he said, acting like he didn't notice the waitress. The waitress. She's really pretty, I said. She was. You don't have to act like you didn't notice, I said. He didn't have to pretend, that was just going to hurt my feelings more. Azalea, when I am with you, I don't notice anyone but you. I looked up at him with white eyes. I think my heart skipped a beat. Azalea, when I said I didn't want to reject you, I meant it. I don't just want to help you get your wolf back. I want to be the mate you deserve. I hope you'll give me at least a chance to try, he said earnestly. I literally could not believe the words he was saying. Why would an alpha want me as a mate? I was small and weak, I didn't have a wolf and have never even turned. I was basically a human, and human mates always created problems for the wolf. I just stared at him at a loss for words. His face fell a little. I will understand if you don't want to give me a chance. I don't really deserve one. Not only was I mean to you growing up, but I also rejected you and slept with other women since then, he said. For some reason, that last bit cut deep. He continued, but I would like a chance. Give me a chance to show you I can make you happy. If I can't show you, 
then I will walk away. I'll reject you if you want, and we can do it correctly. Please, I would really like a chance. It was then that the waitress came back with our coffee and cake. She placed our order down on the table and, with a lingering look at Liam, said, If you need anything, don't be afraid to call for me before leaving. I looked at my coffee. Of course, she didn't hear me at all and brought it black. Liam looked at me, then down at my coffee. Wait a moment, he said before she got too far away. Yes, she said, smiling at him. I kind of wanted to punch her in the face. She asked for cream and sugar. Not black coffee. I'd appreciate it if you could stop drooling at me long enough to listen to your customer. If you could bring her some cream and sugar, I would sure appreciate it. Also, this napkin seems to be soiled. We won't need it, he told her, handing her over a napkin that looked like it had writing on it. She got red in the face, nodded at him, and walked away. She returned moments later with some cream and sugar. After she left us alone, I said, Okay. Okay. He replied. Okay, I'll give you a chance, but there's something you should know, I said, hesitating. Yeah, he asked. Well, I kind of haven't ever, well, I just never. I have never dated anyone before, I said finally. Well, at least I won't be competing with anyone then, he said with a large grin. This made me giggle. He had a really nice smile. So, how was your day so far, he asked me. A little crazy, I said with a small laugh. I got up early so I could make sure the inn was completely taken care of before I left today. There was a whole lot on my list for today mysteriously. I said, thinking about the old man. I wonder if he was trying to prevent me from going with Liam today. Although, I never told him I was. So, what kind of stuff gets put on your list, he asked with curiosity in his voice. Oh, just boring stuff. I am sure you wouldn't care much, I said. No, I want to know. I want to know everything about your life Azalea, he said earnestly. My heart melted a little bit at this. After that, I went on to talk about my day and my normal duties at the inn. I felt like all I did was talk while he listened. He would ask questions or make little jokes here and there. Before I knew it, Liam was looking down at his watch. Oh no. I am boring you. I said worriedly. All I have done is talk about the inn. Oh, you have it all wrong, Azalea. I was just checking to see if it was time to head to our next destination. You couldn't bore me if you tried, he said. A blush crept across my cheeks. I looked towards the windows, realizing that it was now dusk. He stood up and pulled out his wallet. Leaving some money on the table, he walked to my side of the table and offered me his arm as he had earlier. I stood up, putting my hand into the crook of his elbow. I happily noticed that we had not seen the waitress again since she brought our drinks and dessert. A small smile made its way across my lips. What? Liam asked as we made our way out of the cafe and down the sidewalk. It's nothing. I am just having a really lovely time, I said, looking at him. He smiled at me again, saying, Good. I wouldn't be doing my job if you weren't. Chapter 14 Liam led us through town, making small talk. I noticed that we were headed toward the small sports stadium used for various sporting events with the local schools. It was starting to get dark, and I couldn't imagine why we were here. Liam, what are we doing at the sports stadium? I asked. SHHH. Patience, all will be revealed, I promise he said with a devilish grin. 
A girl could get trapped in that smile. He led me to the field entrance, where athletes would access the field. As we entered, I was surprised. A candle-lit path led to the other end of the field, where there looked to be a movie screen set up. A small gasp escaped my lips. What is this? I asked him, looking up into his blue orbs. He looked down at me with a sweet grin. This is dinner and a movie, kitten, he said. We worked our way down the candle-lit path and ended at a picnic blanket. It was surrounded by candles, and there was a picnic basket already sitting to the side. In front of the picnic blanket was a large, outdoor movie screen. We sat down on the blanket next to each other. Did you do all of this? I asked, looking around. Had a little help but yet, he chirped. This is too much. We already had coffee. I said, looking at him. Nothing is too much when it comes to you, Azalea. Plus, you already told me this is your first date. Of course, I am going to do this right, he said with a wink. I blushed. He turned around and grabbed the picnic basket. Hungry, he asked. I nodded my head. He began pulling out dishes from the basket. I looked at him, curious as to what he brought. So, I am not much of a cook, but, he trailed off. He opened up a container of homemade macaroni and cheese with a breaded topping. It was still warm and gooey. Wow. I said. I know it's kind of little kid food, but it's just about the only thing I can make that tastes good, he said with a shy look on his face. No, it looks amazing, Liam. I said enthusiastically. Really? Yes, I love macaroni and cheese. Someone always came and snatched up the leftovers at the pack house, so I didn't get to eat it much, I told him and then stopped, completely embarrassed. I looked down at my hands in my lap. I really didn't want to talk about living in the pack house. It just kind of slipped out. Liam yes, I love macaroni and cheese. Someone always came and snatched up the leftovers at the pack house so I didn't get to eat it much, she said and then immediately stopped. She looked down at her fingers in her lap. I was that A.E. I always snuck into the kitchen after dinner and ate leftovers. She looked up at me with a sad look in her eyes. I needed to make up for all the hurt she endured. From me, from other pack members, intentional or not, she never deserved it. I didn't want her to feel self-conscious now, so I said, I made way too much, I think. You can always have these leftovers. I scooped some onto a plate and handed it to her. She gave me a tight smile. I was tanking this, it was going so well before. I pulled out some water bottles from the basket as well as the fruit bowl. It's okay, you know, she said quietly. I stopped in my tracks and looked at her. She was just looking at the plate of food. What happened growing up, what happened to me, it isn't all your fault. And you couldn't have known I was going to turn out to be your mate. It's kind of a cruel joke, to be honest. The moon goddess must really have it out for us, hey? She mated you with a girl with no wolf, who is probably too small to have a wolf and to top it off, I am hated by the whole pack for who I am. I made it to an alpha who is probably one of the scariest and most intimidating wolves in the world who has a responsibility to mate with a strong Luna. I'm not strong enough to be Luna. Ha! Huh. Just a cruel joke. She paused, and I could see tears threatening to spill from her eyes. She took a single bite of the macaroni and cheese holding the spoon in her mouth a moment as if she was savoring it. She set down her plate and stood up. I had no words as she said, I am sorry. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. You shouldn't waste your time with me. 
Thank you for this day. She turned and began to run away back towards the entrance to the sports stadium. I got up, running after her. It didn't take me long to catch her. Azalea, stop! I yelled. She ignored me and continued to flee. I caught up to her, grabbing her arm to stop her and turn her around. Stop! I said, accidentally allowing some of my alpha tone to slip out. I would never use that on her. She froze in the spot, her shoulders tense. I am sorry. I didn't mean that. It's just, I sputtered, trying to find the right words. Just. Don't go. I feel like I keep messing up. She looked at me with tears still in her eyes. I sighed. I know you didn't have the best time in the pack, and I hate that. I know you don't blame me because I asked you not to when I left you here. But I am to blame here. I was the future Alpha, I was supposed to look out for my pack members. I was supposed to lead them. I should have been nice to you, not let everyone be so mean to you. There is no justification for my actions. When I realized you were my mate, I felt terrible. I knew I had messed up. I convinced my parents you needed to go because I thought I was protecting you. I thought if I rejected you and sent you away, you could have a better life. I knew I would probably never find another mate, and that would be my own punishment from the moon goddess. I looked into her green eyes. They were wide but not in fear. I know I can't erase the past. And I hope someday you can maybe tell me about the things I don't know. Now, I want to make up for it. I want to make your life a little bit better your days a little brighter. I want to be the reason those beautiful pink lips smile. I want to be the shine in your magnificent green eyes. I want to get to know you and spend time with you. I don't want to remind you of the past. I want to make your dreams come true. I think finding out we are still mates is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I took a step closer to her, and she didn't move. We were only inches away from each other now. I reached down and grabbed her chin, tilting her sweet face up to mine. Please come back and eat with me. This has been the best night of my life, and I never meant to hurt you. She looked at me for a moment, searching my face for something. She nodded her head ever so slightly and whispered, OK. I stood there for a second, just looking at her delicate features. She was breathtaking even when she was crying. Do you forgive me? I asked her quietly. Yes, she whispered. She relaxed a little, but I didn't let go of her face. Her beauty transfixed me. Move, you, Gavin said in my head. I let go of her chin and stepped aside so we could walk back to the picnic blanket. As we began walking back, I felt her hand hesitantly work its way into mine. I gripped her hand lightly, not wanting ever to let it go. I wondered if I could still save the evening. I wanted so desperately to change her mind about being my Luna. Chapter 15 Azalea I think finding out we are still mates is the best thing that has ever happened to me, he said. His eyes bore into me with sincerity. He stepped closer to me, he was now only inches away, and I could feel a pull towards his inviting warmth. Part of me didn't want to run away, part of me wanted to just melt into his arms and forget everything else existed. But how long could we ignore reality? He reached toward me, gently grabbing my chin and tilting my face towards his. Please come back and eat with me. This has been the best night of my life and I never meant to hurt you, he pleaded. I looked into his eyes, trying to figure out why he was trying so hard. I was being silly, I knew I was being silly. Here he was giving me the best date of my whole life, and I was trying to get him to reject me. We were having such a great time before I messed it up. Okay, 
I whispered as I nodded my head ever so slightly. He seemed to relax just a bit as I agreed. He still didn't move his hand from my chin. Do you forgive me, he asked softly. Yes, I whispered again. Still, Liam held on to me. After a moment, he seemed to snap out of his trance. He released my chin and stepped to the side so I could lead us back to the picnic blanket. I began walking with Liam right beside me. Hesitantly, I reached for his hand. He let my small hand grasp him before holding it lightly. I didn't want to tell him how comforting it was when he grabbed me, even just my hand. I have never felt so secure with anyone and never expected to feel so safe with him. Was this our mate bond? We made our way back over to the picnic blanket. We sat down, and he looked at me before asking, Um, are you hungry, or would you like to start the movie? I'd love to have some macaroni and cheese, please, I replied quietly. My pleasure, he said, more encouraged now. He let go of my hand reluctantly to make our plates. He handed me a plate and then started to get up. I looked at him quizzically. It's getting dark now, so how about dinner and a movie, he asked. I nodded my head with a smile. I hoped some of the awkwardness that had settled in would dissipate with a bit of distraction. He went behind the giant screen and started the projector. He came back with a nervous smile on his face. I hope you like it. I didn't know what you had seen, so I just picked a funny movie. I haven't seen many movies, actually. Just a couple of little kid ones we have watched with ABI. He looked at me, shocked. Wait, so you never even watched the movies they showed at school? I shook my head. No, I either did my homework or took a nap. Unless they were educational films that we were being tested on. Not even like on weekends or during holidays, he asked. I stared at him with my head CD. Did he really think I spent my time doing as I pleased? After a few minutes of not having an answer for him, his eyes widened in understanding. Oh. Well, uh, he started. It's okay. I always have preferred books anyway, I said to spare him the awkwardness. I didn't want to make him feel bad about what happened to me while living at the pack house. I looked down at my plate and started eating. This was really good. Far better than anything I can cook. As the introduction music started on the movie, Liam looked at me with sincere eyes, Azalea, will you tell me about it sometime? About growing up in the pack house? I know we didn't have the same experiences, I want to understand. He looked at me hopefully. I sighed. Sure, I said, not exactly thrilled at the thought of reliving my childhood. Maybe one day I could tell him. Thank you, he said. With that, he turned his attention to the screen. The movie began, and we fell into a comfortable silence eating the dinner he made. When we finished, he took our plates and placed them back inside the picnic basket. It was now completely dark out, and the only light around us was the movie screen slightly illuminating our lounging forms. I began to shiver slightly, realizing the temperature was dropping. Are you cold? he asked quietly. Just a tad chilly, I said. Here, he said, reaching next to the picnic basket to produce a blanket. He scooted himself closer to me, wrapping the soft blanket around my shoulders. Thanks, I said, blushing slightly. I had almost ruined tonight over something silly when Liam had tried so hard to make this night perfect. I began to feel guilty about trying to leave earlier. Are you warm enough, he said, breaking me from my thoughts. Yeah, I am great now, I replied, a small yawn escaping my lips. I was so excited all day that I was now much more tired than I realized. Catching my yawn, 
he adjusted himself even closer to me. This time he scooped me up, placing me right in his lap between his legs. He laid my back to his chest, wrapping his arms around me. I yelped in surprise as he lifted me but immediately relaxed when he wrapped his arms around me. He leaned his face next to my ear. Is this okay, he asked, his hot breath fanning the side of my face. It sent pleasurable chills down my spine. Yeah, I managed to squeak out. His proximity alone was starting to have an effect on me, one I wasn't sure if I should revel in or be terrified of. I felt him smile next to my ear. He moved his head, placing his chin on the top of my head as we continued to watch the movie. I had to admit, he was comfortable to sit with. Not only was this blanket soft, but his body blocked the wind from hitting me, and his warmth invaded me from behind, creating the most relaxing atmosphere. I could also smell him, on the blanket and around me, as we sat cuddled together. The fresh forest scent invaded my senses in an almost sensual way. It wasn't long before I could feel my eyes droop, and my body relaxed further into his. He must have noticed because I could hear his low, gravelly voice in my ear again moments later. You're going to miss the best part, Azalea, he said. Then he lightly nibbled on my ear, waking me right up. The smallest of moans escaped my lips at the pleasurable feeling of his lips on me. He chuckled. So, I do affect you. UMM, I said, not knowing how to answer. He reached his hand up to my chin and turned my face to the side to look at his. You are in control here, kitten, he said. His eyes held nothing but sincere promise in them as he peered down at me. Say the word, and I will kiss you, touch you, anything you want. My cheeks flamed as I swallowed audibly. A smile crept up across his lips. Okay, I said. Okay what, kitten, he asked into my ear, his breath hot on my neck. I don't know what was coming over me, but I had this sudden need to be closer to him. My mind began racing while wondering what his lips would feel like on mine. I never felt this way before, and it made me blush even harder. My face was probably as hot as he was right now. Kiss me, I said in the quietest voice possible. I could feel his face break into an even bigger smile. He raised his hand to my cheek, gently caressing it and coaxing my head to turn to the side. From behind me, he pulled my face to his and slowly closed the distance between our mouths. Slowly and gently, he pressed his lips to mine. It was like fireworks had erupted in my face and sent pleasurable little explosions radiating through my body. He gently moved his lips against mine, coaxing me along. A small moan passed through my lips, and he used the opportunity to invade my mouth with his tongue. Our tongues mingled as he probed every inch of my mouth. He tasted divine, and I knew that I could lose myself in him. All too soon, he pulled away. Without opening my eyes, I pouted and whined a bit at his lips left mine cold and wanting. Without warning, I felt my shoulders being jostled. I opened my eyes to see only the movie screen in front of me with credits rolling. Oh no! Had I fallen asleep? I heard a chuckle from Liam. I turned my head to look at him behind me. What? I questioned. Nothing, you just dozed off is all. It was actually pretty cute, he said still chuckling at me. My cheeks reddened at his words. I had fallen asleep and dreamed about kissing him. What was wrong with me? I turned my face away from him, trying to hide my blush. Sorry about that, I said timidly. It's all right. As long as I didn't bore you to sleep, he said lightly. No, no, no. I said quickly turning around to face him. I was just warm, and it was really comfortable. 
I trailed off before admitting how being in his arms felt. A small, sweet smile graced his lips. Well, I am happy to be your pillow any time. Thanks, I said with a small smile. He knew all the right things to say. I looked around, needing to prevent any awkwardness from sweeping in. Wow, it's beautiful out tonight. You can see so many stars. It is stunning here, he said without removing his eyes from me. I could feel another blush creeping back onto my cheeks as I looked down at my hands. He cleared his throat, then looked away and said, There is somewhere else we can go to look at the stars. It is even prettier than this. I smiled up at him, that sounds lovely. Maybe another time. He looked back at me with a giant smile. He wiggled his eyebrows and said, So, there will be a second date then. I giggled and nodded my head. Yes, I think that can be arranged. Well then, I should probably be getting you home. You did fall asleep on me after all he said. I could feel his excitement. He lifted me from his lap and placed me next to him. I immediately felt a little disappointed not to be held in his arms anymore. You would think I was as light as a feather with the ease at which he picked me up. He was an alpha, though, and alphas were much stronger than average werewolves. He got up and grabbed the picnic basket. I stood up and unwrapped myself from the blanket. I grabbed my cardigan and pulled it on to help fight off the chill that was creeping back in without his body heat around me. I handed him the blanket, and he folded it up, placing it in the picnic basket. Once it was folded and put away, he grabbed everything in one hand and held out his other for me. I grasped his hand and instantly felt his warmth radiate from his palm up my arm. A smile crept its way across my face. Ready, baby, he asked. I nodded my head. He led the way back out of the stadium and down the road towards the inn. As we walked, I couldn't help being both happy and sad. This was my very first date, and it was amazing. He was so thoughtful and sweet. Dinner was amazing. Being in his arms during the movie somehow felt so right, like we were supposed to be like that. But was this all just because of the mate bond somehow not being severed? Without that bond, would he even give me a second glance? Before I knew it, we were approaching the inn. We stopped in the parking lot at his car so he could put the picnic stuff in his trunk. Then we made our way to the back toward my apartment. Is something wrong, Azalea? he asked me. Oh, uh, no, nothing is wrong, I said. Are you sure? You look like you've been sad since we left the field. You can tell me, I won't judge, he said as we approached my door. I began to fish my keys out of my little clutch before answering him. I turned and looked into his brilliant blue eyes. This was absolutely the best night of my life, Liam. I wouldn't change anything about it. Thank you so much, I told him. His eyes flashed with joy for a minute before glazing over with concern. I looked down, not wanting to tell him what was running through my head. I hadn't lied, but I didn't want him to know my doubts. I guess I should probably go. I began. Suddenly, he grabbed my chin and brought my face up to face his. Before I knew it, his lips were on mine. At first, he didn't move, and I just savored the feel of his soft lips on mine. Then he began to deepen the kiss, and I wanted to melt right there. His hand inched around my waist, pulling me close to him as his other hand moved from my chin up my cheek. He wrapped his large hands around my head, spreading his fingers through my hair. He moved his lips over mine, pouring emotion into this kiss. A moan escaped my lips, making him smile over my mouth. He tasted better than in my dream. He gently pulled away, leaning his forehead against mine. 
We both took a minute to catch our breaths before I broke the silence. Wow, I whispered. Tonight was incredible. Thank you for allowing me to spend it with you, Azalea. I hope I made your first date a good one, he said as he pulled away from me. He leaned in once more, kissed the top of my head, and murmured good night into my hair before turning to leave. I watched him walk across the lawn and around the inn. Once he was out of sight, I exhaled a breath I didn't know I was holding in. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode, join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.